Hi, I'm Mrs. D Math. Welcome back if you've been here before. If not, thanks for joining me today. We're going to go over writing equations from situations in seventh grade math. So let's get started. So when it comes to writing an equation from a situation, we're typically talking about some type of a word problem. So addition words are going to be things like increasing, combining, could mean the perimeter or altogether. Subtraction words could be decreasing, removing, remaining, or difference. Multiplying could include changing by a factor, uh, the word per, area, or repeated addition. And dividing is usually grouping or sharing equally. It could also be splitting or repeated subtraction. And these are not all the words you're gonna see, but these are some of the more common ones that we're gonna look for. So let's go ahead and break down one of these problems. So Jen and her friends are going to lunch. They ordered three hamburgers plus a basket of fries to share. The fries cost $6.75 and the total cost is $28.75. We need to write an equation to find the cost of each hamburger. So the question or what you're looking for is always gonna be your clue to your variable. So in this case, each hamburger is what we need to find the cost of. So hamburgers represents your variable. So we're just gonna go with a variable of H. So now that we know the H goes with our hamburgers, we can look in the problem and we can see where we see the word hamburgers, that's our variable H. And with that hamburger, we have the number three. So that means mathematically in my problem, I'm going to have 3H, that represents my three hamburgers. Then they're also going to get plus, there's a key word for one of my operations, plus a basket of fries. Well, I do know that the fries cost 675, so instead of adding a variable here, I'm going to add the cost of the fries, 675. And I know that after they buy those three hamburgers and the basket of fries to share, the total cost is $28.75. So in this case, I can use this process now to solve for the cost of the three hamburgers. And if you missed any of the other videos, you're going to have to do the inverse operations in order to isolate your variable. So we wanna get that H by itself to find out the cost of each hamburger by first subtracting 675 from both sides and then we want to divide that cost by three. So let's go ahead and look at a couple more sample problems. And in this case, Jack bought four new pairs of shorts and a shirt. The shirt was $18 and the total amount was $109.16. They want us to write an equation to find the cost of each pair of shorts. So again, we're looking for the cost of the shorts. So my variable, I'm gonna make S for shorts. I see shorts here and I see four goes with that shorts. So there's the first part of my equation, four S. And then I'm also going to buy a shirt, which means I'm gonna add the cost of the shirt. That would be $18, so plus 18. And that equals my total amount of $109.16. Very similar to the last problem, which you're gonna see very often. It's not difficult to break these problems down and write your equation that goes with it. So now we need to solve for s. So the first thing I wanna do is subtract the $18 cost for the shirt because I know I spent that. So now I can see that this goes away. So now four pairs of shorts cost $91.16. And then the last thing I need to do is divide that price into four pairs of shorts. So now S equals $22 and 79 cents. So I can see the cost of each pair of shorts was $22 and 79 cents. Now, this essentially means that they went and bought four pairs of the same shorts for the same price. It could also mean that the average cost of each pair of shorts is $22 and 79 cents. So let's try another problem. This time we have Paul, and Paul's gonna bring cookies for his coworkers. He's gonna put half in the break room, and then he's gonna take the rest to his office. He ate two cookies, 
and 16 were left. Write an equation to find the number of cookies that he brought. So cookies represents my variable, so I'm gonna make that a C. You don't always have to make your variable represent whatever you're talking about. You could always just use an X or a Y or an A or whatever you're comfortable with, but it's kind of fun to change it up sometimes. And this way you may see why we do use different variables for different problems. So first he took those cookies, here's my cookies here, and he put half of them in the break room. So that means that we took half of the cookies. So there's two ways you can write this. You can write one half C, or you could write C divided by two because he technically took half those cookies or broke the cookies into two parts. So either way is gonna work for your equation. So we're gonna go ahead and go with one half C, and then he ate two cookies. Well, if I eat something in math, that means I'm going to subtract two. And then he was left with, so the total after that was 16. So we need to use this equation to figure out how many he actually brought with him to begin with. So let's go ahead and solve. So the first thing I wanna do is add two to both sides because I wanna get rid of this two by doing the inverse operation. And now one half C equals 18. And in this case, that means half the cookies was 18. So in order to solve for the total cookies, I want to multiply by two. So that means that the total number of cookies is 36. But just remember, you can always go back and plug in your answer to the original problem and check to make sure that it's correct. Now, if you wrote the problem incorrectly, then you're going to end up with the wrong answer and you're gonna check it and think you have the right answer. So if you wanna make sure that you wrote the problem correctly, sometimes you can go back through and look at the details again and just double check to make sure that everything is written out correctly before you solved. I hope this video was helpful on not just writing equations, but also going back through how to solve a two-step equation. I'm Mrs. D Math. Thanks for joining me for writing equations from situations in seventh grade math. Have a great day. Bye.